Welcome back to Buck and Bass Basics. Today I want to talk about my main focus for this channel, where I really got the idea to get it going and start going with it. So I want to talk about my kayak fishing. You know, I, I love deer hunting. It's right in the heart of deer season. I should be making videos on deer season, but I, I lost my lease. I lost some properties and really just been hunting public land this year and it's, it's been a grind. I got 47 introductions for my day of hunting and that just ended up with seeing people and dogs and cars and everything else so i've really started focusing towards my kayak fishing again the moyak series and the all-american series is coming up this this spring um moyak decided to do a winter series and i decided to get on board and i and i started november 20th was our first tournament and i did real well i finished third didn't finish where I wanted to. I want to. I want to win. I'd like to win Angler of the Year, qualify for the national championship again. That's my goal: is to win Angler of the Year. So we got another tournament coming up December 11th in Table Rock. Unfortunately, I didn't prepare and I messed up my gear and I didn't get my GoPro going the way I wanted to on November 20th. So I'm already starting behind with my content. I didn't get any real good content at all from that tournament um i do have some pictures of the fish that i weighed in and the scenery and, and the lures that i was using and I'll, I'll probably recap that um when i do the the ozarks tournament so from what I'm, what i want to talk about today is the kayak that i use i use a jackson big rig fd hd that's what I used in the previous season. I fished Moyak. I fished a couple of lake tournaments, but I really focused on the river series and finished third overall there. Um, but I want to get into the lakes. I want to start fishing bigger tournaments. I want to get into All-American, travel around some. So with that being said, I'm going to completely modify my Jackson. I, I have all the parts here um, for the new markup, but I wanted to talk about the kayak what i have on it how i fished it last season what i think about it pros and cons of this boat so let's get to it let's let's look at the boat and talk about its features and what i like and don't like all right guy here she is it's my 2020 jackson big rig fdhd she is a heavy stable platform this boat comes in at about 147 pounds dry fully rigged out with the motors and everything my tackle went well over 200 pounds but it's 40 inches wide it's got a comfortable seat it's got plenty of storage you know front and back you know you got your tray storage here and then underneath it you just got storage that goes all the way through the boat that's where i keep my battery for my motor I got my sonar battery here, the Yak Attack by Nakwa, this 10 and a half hour. It ran my little Lorenz unit for days. Uh, three days down at the national championship, I didn't even charge it. So I got that. I got the E drive and I got the pedals. I do not like running the E drive while I'm fishing. So I used the E drive to get me to and from distant locations like when i fished at the national championship i was making mile and a half run to my spot and i would just use the motor to get me there you get 30 minutes from when you can put in the boat till you can start fishing so i would take that 30 minutes and travel and then i would take two little bolts out and i'll do a little quick video on that put my foot drive on fish swap it back out drive back to the dock that's how i ran it the flex drive is the best feature of this boat this thing, if you hit a log, if you hit the bottom, it kicks up, it kicks flat, it's protected, and you don't break it. You don't have to take it in and out for shallow travel. You just flip the lever, kicks it down, and it's two modes of up and down, and there you go. Like I said, the seat's, the seat's very stable. It's got the molly in the back. You can put on packs or your if you want to put your knife holders and things like that in the back of that you can i ran the yak attack no i ran the flambo kayak crate um, kept my soft plastics in the top my boxes in the bottom two rod holders on the box two horizontal 
you know, two vertical rod holders in the back. And then this boat, the wonderful thing about it is it comes with this tray here. And it's got two built-in rod holders on each side. And it's got the cutout back here. If you're a fly fisherman, you can hold a longer fly rod with it. Come to the back, you open this access to get to your rudder. More storage back here. You know, I would keep my rain gear and stuff like that back here if I needed to. And then oh, we got us an assassin bug that decided to be here for the winter. And then your rudder system is all enclosed. The cables are enclosed, so you're not catching up a nose. Um, you put your rudder in through the bottom, it comes in here. Solid carrying handle, comes pre-drilled for the Power Pole Micro. I ordered one in April and it's still not here. <laughs> so I may have to come up with a different avenue. And then back here I got my landing gear. I don't even remember this brand. Um, I don't like it. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm gonna get rid of it. I want one that either goes in the scupper holes or a mount permanently that fold up and down. This one's real hard to get where you want it and then the straps come loose. It's just, I don't know, I didn't like it. And this is your rudder steering here. You can have it left and right. Um, the new pod that I'm putting in with the, is gonna have the foot pedal steering. Your seat is in track and can go up and forward and back. It comes out real easy, two pins, pops right out. I usually would store my E-Drive motor back here and my cooler. And that's how I went. So uh, I'll do a little quick video of the flex drive, how easy it is to swap in and out with that. And then I'm going to start putting all the new stuff on and we'll talk about what's going on it. And then I'll have an after video of what it looks like with it on. All right guys, we got our flex drive here. This is the E-Drive. Got five little speeds on it. it. It's real easy. The knobs here, forward and reverse. It's it's a little noisy. And it's not that fast. All in all, I, I can't even say that I'm real happy with it. It was vital to making some long trips this year. It saved some leg power and some time. Um, definitely a necessity if you plan on just running your foot pedals and not mounting a trolling motor or anything like that. If you plan on making some big trips for tournaments. So. Real easy to swap out. It comes with these little wing nuts with the track. Take those out, there's two of them right here in the front. Pop straight out. Line your, with the groove. Got one, two. And kick it up, and you're ready to go forward, ready to go reverse. Real simple system, real easy to swap out. That why, that's why it wasn't a big deal to, to motor to my spot and then switch over to the foot pedals. Love it. This drive here is wonderful. I, I, I made many miles with it this summer. I can't complain about it at all. All right guys, so last year I ran a very simple Lowrance traditional sonar, five inch screen. It was great for, I found several pieces of key structure during tournaments and it, it was good. It, it's a very effective tool. But I bought a new boat this year and I put all the fancy sonar on it. And I got the Garmin Echo Map Ultra 106 SV mounts and screens on my boat. And I got the panoptics, and I, and I like it. And so I decided that I wanted to do that with my kayak. And it's real easy. I got the, the cradle here. And I just mount this on my kayak. And then my screen from the boat. This is always hardwired in. So my screen from the boat, I just clamp it right in there. And I got, I got a 10-inch screen on my kayak that I didn't have to pay any extra money for. The only place where I'm gonna to have to pay more money is with the Panoptics LVS-12 transducer. This has some of the same features as the traditional Panoptics. It's, it's just limited. 
So I don't have to have the black box. It's plug and play straight into my unit. And it only has a 30 degree cone forward and down. You can do forward and down at the same time and see them on the split screen. But you can't do the 130 or 160 view that the Panoptics offers with the LVS32 transducer in the black box and all that. This is just a plug and play, a more simplistic Panoptics option for the kayak. I really, when I'm bass fishing, I don't do the, the video game fishing that much. Uh, I'm not saying that it don't ever come into play. Sometimes on deep structure, you can, you know, see what the fish are reacting to. I'm, I mostly use that for white bass and crappie. I like the forward view for finding isolated structure off the bank when I'm fishing particular things. And then I like it for when I'm out on a point or looking for a rock pile that's on my map, I can find this, you know, out to 60, 70 feet from me and cast to that. That's my goal with it. Um, it's gonna look pretty awesome on a kayak, I believe. You know, I'm, I may not win anything this year, but I'm gonna look good trying it. So I'm mounting that on there and I'm mounting the Motor Go, the Motor Guide XI3 trolling motor with spot lock. So I can get out to these offshore structure, offshore cover that's on the maps, spot lock in, take my pan optics, view around my kayak, find these targets, find these fish, and, and hopefully compete with some of these top guys like Lance Burris and Chad Davison. You know, these guys are out there killing it nationally. Um, so I'm competing against these guys. I'm gonna have to have the, the same quality stuff they're having. So I'm about to start on my modifications in my kayak right now. When we're done, I will show you the finished product. Thank you. All right, guys, well, I've spent the majority of the day re-rigging this boat. I took the old foot, foot pot out, um, took the old transducer out, the old fish finder out, um, mounted a new trolling motor, put in my new Garmin electronics, and homemade a mount for my pan optics. I'm, I'm not real crazy about it. I might end up just spending the money and getting an official mount from one of these companies out there that does that i'm just trying to figure out where i want to put it on my kayak but right now it looks pretty clean so i'll give you a little rundown of what we did starting here this is my my pan optics transducer a little homemade pvc mount on paint black and then i put the new pot in got rid of the foot pedals um, the new garmin it's a uh, it's the Echo Map Ultra 106 SV. I got it run in here pretty clean. It's way cleaner than, than it was before. And then I got the motor guide XI3 here. I got it mounted, got the quick detach mount. And it's got a little groove for this to go in right under my, my latch. And probably gonna have to do a little bit of waterproofing, but all in all, I think she came out real clean well the, the kayak's not clean i just got through fishing out of it not too long ago but that's uh that's it for today and hopefully be out on table rock next week and all this stuff will run right but i am tired it's 10 o'clock and we gotta get up in the morning so i'm gonna call it a night see you guys in the future